Fight on TV5 News. I'm Mark Despedakis. Coming up next, new information on the missing buck in Knox Township. The details coming up. Good evening. I'm Jemba Vivino. Will these warm conditions continue throughout the weekend? I'll have a complete weather watch forecast coming up. College Press Day will be hitting the Clarion University campus. Get the story later in University News. I'm Nani Lombard. Stay tuned to TV5 News, where I'll be giving the distance a movie review. Plus, an auction of an unusual sort. Details coming up later. Kelly, and join me on Entertainment Beat tonight as we look at this week's calendar of events. Join us next for this and more. As TV5 News at 8 brings coverage closer to home. This is TV5 News, bringing coverage closer to home. Good evening and welcome to TV5 News. I'm Christy Herman. And I'm Dave Marsh. Marsh Despatakis joins us from the TV5 Newsroom with tonight's top story regarding a prize-winning trophy buck that is still missing. Mark? Thanks, Dave. Well, an update on a story we did a few weeks ago. This prize-winning buck is missing from Knox, and now there's a $25,000 reward for the safe return of the buck. It's tonight's top story. The morning of October 21st proved to be all too eventful for Rod Miller of Knox. Someone came in, cut a hole in the chain link fence, probably darted the deer, Goliath. And Goliath, a prize 28-point buck, was reportedly taken somewhere between 3 and 5 a.m. on the night of October 20th. The buck, as seen here, was bought by Miller for his deer breeding farm, and he had no idea that the buck would turn into the extraordinary animal that is seen here. He was just phenomenal in his horn growth. He could, what he was doing, very, very few deer ever do. And uh, that's what makes him so special. He was one of a kind. Okay. That one of a kindness made Goliath attractive to be stolen. Whoever got him possibly is uh, drawing semen out of him or they're breeding their own does. Okay. And, they're just going to go from there. Who knows what they're going to do, really? Okay. With a $25,000 reward now being offered and national magazines publicizing the disappearance of the deer, Miller hopes brighter days are around the corner. Well, with all the flyers and uh, different magazines we have it in, we're hoping someone will see it, someone that knows what happened or can piece uh, this together and possibly turn somebody in. Okay. Now, once again, there is a $25,000 reward for the safe return of the buck. There are flyers all over Clarion County offering the $25,000 reward. And if you have any information, there are a couple phone numbers you can call. You can call Rod or Diane at 797-1230 or the state police at 226-1710. We'll update you with further information as it becomes available. Live in the newsroom, I'm Mark Despotakis. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Mark. A Clarion County jail inmate was ordered held for trial Tuesday on charges he struggled with guards and bit an officer twice. Terry Ricotta is charged with aggravated assault, aggravated harassment by a prisoner, simple assault, harassment and stalking, and disorderly conduct in the September 19th incident. Ricotta is also facing multiple charges stemming from previous incidents including aggravated assault, kidnapping, unlawful restraint, and harassment. District Justice Anthony Lepinto ordered the defendant bound over on the most recent counts following a preliminary hearing. A Reimersburg man waived a preliminary hearing Tuesday on charges he accepted a $400 bribe to not testify against his stepfather at a court proceeding. Dennis R. Smith is charged with perjury, witness or informant taking a bribe, criminal conspiracy, and obstructing the administration of law. He allegedly agreed in June to accept the $400 in exchange for not testifying against Frank Surrey of Reimersburg at a summary court hearing involving disorderly conduct and defiant trespass. Court papers said witnesses later provided written statements that Smith told them to lie on the stand. A Stoneboro man led Franklin State Police on a 12-mile chase along Route 8 south of Franklin Monday evening before being arrested on drunken driving and drug charges. Ronald W. Jones was charged with fleeing from police, a DUI, and possession of marijuana after police caught up with him near the intersection of Route 8 and Blair Road. The chase began when Franklin officers observed Jones driving erratically near the Polk Polk cutoff on Route 8. Jones allegedly ignored Franklin officers' attempt to pull him over, prompting the chase. 
The Oil City Derrick is releasing an audit release Tuesday that said Valley Grove School District received copious amounts of state funding from the 1994 to 1996. According to school district officials, findings from the state auditor general, Robert P. Casey, Jr., the district received payments of approximately $18,000 in transportation subsidies reimbursements. The state said the audit showed district personnel made several critical errors in district transportation supervisor Roy Skinner failed to adhere to state guidelines and instructions. A stubborn and pervasive water problem in Franklin has prompted the city's waterworks department to embark on a series of trial and error efforts. For more than a year, city neighborhoods have had sporadic problems with their city supplied water, which has flowed brown and sometimes black from faucets. A brief hiatus during the first half of the year erupted into widespread water rows in midsummer. And the League of Human Voters in Clarion County will hold a program titled Y2K, How Prepared is Clarion County, at 7.30 p.m. next Tuesday at the Main Street Center in Clarion. The meeting is open to the public and features a panel of representatives from the county's Federal Emergency Management Agency Committee, Human Services Department, and the Clarion County Area Agency on Aging. The panel will discuss the county's level of preparedness, what actions are being taken to protect area citizens, which concerns are reasonable and which are not, and some common scams as well as fielding questions from the audience. A panel of Clarion University faculty members has outlined Clarion's new World Wide Web Active Learning Training Program. Professors Scott Kuhn and Mark Mitchell, along with several fellow faculty members, gave the presentation at the Eastern Small College Computing Conference at St. Benaventure University in Olean, New York. Kuhn and Mitchell, through a state system of higher education grant, developed the World Wide Web Program. They concentrated on training 25 Clarion University faculty members to use web-based active learning strategies for their course. When TV5 News at 8 returns, a college press day will be coming up to Clarion University campus. Details coming up. Plus, more information about the renovations to the new stadium in Pittsburgh. Also, a vision is unveiled for the future. Plus, Chris Jen Bevavino joins us with the latest on the weather conditions. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. In the early years, young children cannot stand on their own. Uniting parents and children is an important part of the life of a community. Stand for Children encourages people to make a personal commitment to stand for the health of children. 300,000 Americans marched in Washington, D.C. last June to support Stand for Children Day. Stand for Children seeks to lift the belief that children need our help to stand. I'm the man. It's my birthday. Exercised lately. <sighs> go for the mouthful. Go for the fun. Go, go for go cake. Go for for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. And it's go for, go for, go for cakes. Open wide. Stuff your face. There's always room for more. Go for cakes. Oh. And tea the box. Every Explode. Exercise lately. Till you explode. Sad looking back now, the things you go through in life. Scary. The worst thing about being on welfare was my kids, what they really wanted. I had to get a better life for my girls and myself. I got off welfare. I got a good job. Makes me the happiest mother in the world. I live for my girls. We're not asking you to hire everyone on welfare, just one. This is TV5 News at 8, anchored by Christy Herman. Dave Marsh, Jan Bevavino with TV5 Weather, Don Ursich with Sports. Now from the news team bringing coverage closer to home, this is TV5 News. And welcome back to TV5 News at 8. College Press Day is coming to Clarion University on November 12th. The programs and presentations are free and open to the public and will be held in the Gemmell Student Complex. Clark M. Thomas, senior editor of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, will be delivering the keynote address. The theme for the College Press Day is Civil Discourse. Other topics such as libel and the student press, marketing yourself, how to get your first job, and many other areas will be discussed throughout the day's workshops. A panel of graduates will be featured in the afternoon, followed by a media fair. The keynote address will start at around 9.45 a.m. 
Ebenezer Scrooge, Tiny Tim, and Tim Cratchit, and all the other favorites of Charles Dickens' Christmas classic, A Christmas Carol, will come to life on stage at the Claren University in the Mara Floyd Auditorium on Monday, November 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Tickets for the University Activities Board-sponsored event are $12 for adults and $7 for children under 12. Claren University students with a valid ID card will be admitted for free. Tickets are now on sale. Those seeking advance tickets should send a check payable to the Claren University Activities Board, the Gemmell Information Desk, Gemmell Student Center, Clarion University, Clarion PA, 16214, or phone 814-226-2044. A group discount of $2 off per ticket on groups over 10 or more is being offered pre-sale only. Taking a look at the headlines from tomorrow's issue of the Clarion News today, several races in the November 2nd general election may be contested. PennDOT says it is ready for the winter and Y2K. The lead singer from the Pittsburgh rock group Strange Brew has local ties. The Clarion Township Board rejects Road 571 request, and the Clarion County Planning Commission approves the construction of three communication towers. A Center County man who authorities say stabbed the rival to death in a dispute over a woman will appear at a preliminary hearing a week from today. The hearing was pushed back from today because Clearfield County District Attorney Chip Bell was unable to attend. Daniel Irwin Sankey of Belafonte is accused of killing Orvis Clark at Clark's home in Cartos last Thursday. According to a police affidavit, Sankey was angry about calls that the woman he was seeing had been receiving from Clark. Police allege that Sankey confronted Clark and the argument turned into a fight. Sankey told police that he threw away bloody clothes and gloves not far from Clark's house. Police say Sankey admitted three times to killing Clark. Taking a look at news across the state, the Federal Bureau of Investigation and state investigators stopped up their search for a person sending email racist, racist emails. Students at Penn State University have been receiving online threats. A campus official reported that 26 minority students received a second batch of threats on Monday. A total of 68 have found and reported that the threats of similar hate mail found on their computers. District Justice Gigi Sullivan is facing charges of drug use, bribery, theft, and bad checks at a preliminary hearing today. Sullivan will face the hearing at Allegheny County Courthouse in Pittsburgh. Attorney General Mike Fisher filed charges against Sullivan last month. Sullivan was found shooting heroin in her chambers and withheld the identity of her drug dealer. An accident on Route 11 in Monroe Township killed the driver of a garbage truck. State police say that the accident occurred just before 6.30 a.m. The driver lost control of his truck and slid into the side of a mountain, and then the truck overturned. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver's name has not yet been released. A 20-year vision for the growth of the Harrisburg International and Capital Airports was unveiled today. Authorities of the Susquehanna Area Regional Airport unmasked the study earlier. The study shows that Harrisburg International's passenger traffic will grow from 1.5 million to 3.5 million by 2018. New ideas are being discussed about this potential problem. No solution has been resolved. An application for a grant that would hire a Main Street manager was finalized yesterday. Anyone who makes a trip from Harrisburg, Lancaster, or York to State College may see changes in Lewistown. Tom Grabenik is with CEDADOG, a council of governments serving counties in central Pennsylvania, and was hired to help prepare the Lewistown application for a Main Street manager. Grenebic believes that this is the key to downtown revitalization. If Lewistown receives the grant, someone could be hired this winter. State Department of Transportation officials are trying to shore up a 42-year-old overpass near Washington. Console Incorporated is scheduled to begin long wall mining in January or February. The area being mined is South Strabane Township. Mining will run parallel to Interstate 70. Officials fear that the surrounding roadways, such as Zydeker Station Road, could suffer residual damage. Two towers planned for the south end of the new Pittsburgh Steelers Stadium will be shorter than expected. The towers are planned to be 165 feet tall with shops and offices inside. Yet the team will have to settle for a modest plan with 90-foot towers. The towers will have ramps to let the fans reach the upper decks of the stadium. It was decided that the shorter towers give fans in the stadium a better view of the city and the point. The stadium, which will still under construction and expected to cost $252 million, and is still expected to open in 2001. Straight ahead on TV5 News, a 13-year-old stands trial today for murder, and yet another scam is being sent out on the Internet. Could you be involved? Find out next. Look at Pennsylvania's influenza cases, and Carolyn Kelly will join us with the latest details in tonight's entertainment beat. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Introducing new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay 
on the phone 20 hours a week and get a pasty complexion, flabby body, and, and a great, great new nickname, nickname at school. Exercise lately. I like all my friends to be there. I want my mother to be there. My hair is gonna be done so beautiful. A lot of music, a nice blue dress. I want to be beautiful for every single person that goes there. If I got shot, I want to have a nice funeral. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. It's not just about making plans. It's about making a difference. And taking an interest, not just earning it. At more than investing, it's about knowing you. My Investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin located on Main Street. Phone 226 7896. Welcome back to TV5 News. Nearly 400 people have been murdered in Kosovo since NATO troops took control in Yugoslavia province in June. Figures were released by NATO officials showing 135 of those murdered were Serbs, 145 were ethnic Albanians, and the rest were unknown or of other ethnic origins. Efforts by foreign officials to end the ethnic battling have not brought any decrease in the murder rate. Homicides actually have increased slightly in the last two weeks. Kosovo was home to nearly two million ethnic Albanians before they were temporarily pushed out by the Serbs. Japanese school books may soften their description of the Japanese military's sex slaves during World War II. A newspaper and the Kyoto News Service have applied to make the changes needed. One publisher wants to delete wording that shows women were at wartime brothels specifically to serve soldiers. The other company would like to rearrange and change wording. Nationalist educators have harshly criticized the change. They argue the women often work voluntarily and brothels and they were sometimes paid. If you've been on the internet, you may have seen an advertisement for winning something. Well, the latest scam on the net is you can make between $2,500 and $4,500 a month by stuffing envelopes. Four men allegedly sent 50 million of those emails to internet users. They now face charges in Los Angeles. Three of the men were arrested yesterday and charged with conspiracy and wire fraud. A fourth is expected to surrender today. A postal inspector says that the emails were sent mostly to housewives, students, and retirees. They allegedly told recipients to send $35 or $40 to qualify for the job. Prosecutors in Michigan are summing up their case against a 13-year-old on trial for murder. Nathaniel Abraham was 11 when he fired a gun, shot, and killed 18-year-old Ronnie Green. In closing arguments, prosecutors said Abraham should be convicted of first-degree murder, regardless of his age. They expressed that he took the other boy's life intentionally. Abraham is being tried as an adult and charged with assault with intent to commit murder and two felony firearm counts. If convicted, the teen could receive life in prison without parole. In tonight's Health Beat, the State Health Department has confirmed the first case of influenza in Pennsylvania for this year's flu season. A recent a resident of Lehigh County was diagnosed with influenza type A Sydney. The vaccine produced this first year was designed to fight against the protect and protect the strain. People that are in high risk of contracting the virus are anyone ages 65 or older, has chronic disorders of the heart, lung, kidneys, and immune system, anyone pregnant and in the second or third trimester, or anyone six months to 18 years of age on aspirin therapy. If you are worried or in a high-risk category, please see your physician. This is not um, to replace the consultation with your physician, but to provide medical information. Jen Bevavino joins us now from TV5 Weather Center with a look at your clearing area forecast. Jen? Good evening. I'm Jen Bevavino here with your clearing area forecast. Looking behind me at our satellite imagery map at the moment, you'll notice some various cloud formations covering the state of Pennsylvania at the moment. These cloud formations will be moving easterly out into the Atlantic Ocean, although we will be seeing these effects tonight and Friday afternoon. We do have a 40% chance of thunderstorms tonight, and we will be seeing a 30% chance of sun thunderstorms this Friday. Taking a look at our frontals map now, tomorrow's frontal system, you will notice that we are in a high pressure zone at the moment, and temperatures will be ranging Tomorrow's temperatures will be dropping slightly, although keeping in consideration this weekend, temperatures will be rising high into the mid-60s region once again. Taking a look at our highs map now, you will notice that we were high into the 60s region today. We, you will note that we are going to be continuing along this path throughout the rest of the weekend. Taking a look at our lows map now, you will notice that we were low into the 30s region. We'll be staying along this lows region also throughout the rest of the weekend. Taking a look at our precipitation map, 
you will notice that our precipitation map is clear and accurate today. We didn't see any signs of precipitation today, although tonight, keep in mind, we do have a 40% chance of thunderstorms, so keep that in mind if you are going outside tonight. Taking a look at our five-day planner now, you will notice for Thursday it will be partly sunny with a high of 45 and a low of 31. For Friday, rain showers predicted with a high of 56 and a low of 21. For Saturday, partly cloudy with a high of 58 and a low of 35. For Sunday, partly cloudy once again with a high of 61 and a low of 38. And for Monday, it will be partly sunny with a high of 58 and a low of 35. That's Clarion's current and extended weather conditions. Back to you, Dave and Christy. Thanks, Jen. Coming up after the break, Michael Androsic will be here with the highlights from the world of sports. And Carolyn Kelly gives us the Clarion's calendar of upcoming events. And Nani Lombard will be joining us with tonight's entertainment beat. Also, a plastic cow auction is all the rave in Chicago. Find out what Oprah Winfrey has to do with it. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Standing out from the crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. Where have all the children gone? Long time passing. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. You can help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Gone to graveyards one by one. Oh, when will we ever learn? News travels fast. That's why you need the speed and accuracy of a news team that brings coverage closer to home. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night, join TV5 News for Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8. Tune in for the latest in regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8 is here on TV5. Introducing the Italian Visa Trio from Domino's Pizza, located in the 800 Center in Clarion. Domino's Pizza offers a wide variety of pizza, wings, breadsticks, and hoagies. And for just $9.99, get a large unlimited topping pizza. Stop in or have Domino's deliver. That's Domino's Pizza, located in the 800 Center. Phone 226-4060. That's Domino's Pizza, 226-4060. Hi, I'm Michael Anjostic with the Sports in Two Minutes. Don Ursich has the night off. Let's start off with a big announcement today by Clarion Athletic Director Bob Carlson. Miller uh, has decided to retire effective May 22nd of this uh, year 2000 coming up. In one Bill Miller is in his 22nd year coaching the men's program and the 13th with the women's. During that time, he has led Clarion's men to 16 PSAC titles and the women to 12. That is that Clarion is fortunate to have somebody waiting not to take over because he's been a partner here in the program for 12 years. He's just going to be uh, officially calling the shots from now on or you know, starting in, uh, in May. But he's been my partner here you know, for 12 years and I've known him as a person since he was 10 years old. Set to fill his spot is his longtime friend and assistant, Mark Van Dyke. The time I would have left San Antonio for was to come up here for this position. And it's been uh, a great 12 years. And now I hope that uh, when we take over, we can continue the success that the program has. Just a few of Bill's accomplishments are the NCAA Men's Coach of the Year and the PSAC Men's and Women's Coach for the years 1996 and 1998. Turning to baseball news, the Ken Griffey Jr. race has come down to four teams. The Cards, Astros, and the Reds have shown the most interest. New York, Met, New York Mets have also expressed interest in acquiring Griffey. We will keep you posted as the situation develops. In hockey, the Penguins are dead last of the Atlantic Division. The only bright spot is that Captain Yarmer Yager has scored or assisted on 15 consecutive goals. 
Yager has 24 points in 12 games. And finally, let's take a look at the bowl championship series ranking. At number one is Florida State, then Tennessee, Virginia Tech at third, Florida at fourth, and Kansas State rounding off the top five. Penn State fell to number seven with a close loss to Minnesota last Saturday. That's it for this week. Now back to Dave and Christy. Thanks, Michael. It's a cattle auction of a very different sort. Plastic cows went to the highest bidders in Chicago last night. Dozens of life-sized art cows had dotted Chicago sidewalks for months. One was painted like Uncle Sam, another was a cow on skis. Oprah Winfrey's business partner kicked in the winning $36,000 bid for a fruity bovine. That plastic cow has a colorful bowl of fruit painted on it. Sotheby's auction house raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity with the sale. Talk about your cash cows. And now Nani Lombard joins us with this week's Distinta Movie Reviews. Nani? Thanks. Once again, I'm back with my review of two new movies. First, I saw Three to Tango, starring Nev Campbell and Matthew Perry. It's about two architects who get a chance to design a multi-million dollar cultural center for tycoon Charles Newman, played by Dylan McDermott. Oscar Novak, played by Perry, and his partner, played by Oliver Platt, are seen hugging each other once they receive the opportunity to create the center. Newman, assuming Novak is gay, gives him the task of spying on his mistress Amy, played by Nev Campbell. Obviously, Novak falls in love with Amy, but has to pretend he's gay in order to keep his job. I didn't find this movie very funny at all. There were some occasions when Oliver Platt added some humor, but overall I found this movie long, predictable, and lacking humor. I also saw Bringing Out the Dead, which takes place in the early 1990s in New York City. It follows two days and three nights of EMS paramedic Frank Pierce, played by Nicolas Cage. Director Martin Scorsese provided a glimpse into the world of emergency medicine on the streets. Showing three nights of Pierce's life, Scorsese's style fit perfectly since a paramedic's life never reaches a plateau. Instead, it loops back on itself day after day. Each shift displays different aspects of Frank's personality, depending on his partners. During the first night, Pierce meets Mary Burke, played by Patricia Arquette, while he's re reviving her father. He then corresponds with her throughout the rest of the movie. The aspect I enjoyed most about this movie was Scorsese refused to explain ideas straightforwardly. He forced the audience to look past the obvious and into the deeper aspects. This was one of the best films I've seen in weeks, and I highly recommend it. For the Distinta Movie Review, I'm Nani Lombard. Now here's Carolyn Kelly, Kelly with the calendar of events. Thanks. Good evening and welcome to another exciting edition of Entertainment Beat, where we will be looking at this week's calendar of events. On Thursday, November 11th, be sure to wish any veteran you know a happy Veterans Day. Friday, November 12th, catch the student recital in Hart Chapel Theater at 8.15 p.m. as John Pinella plays percussion. And on Saturday, November 13th, the Lift Every Voice Choir Gospel Fest will be in the Gemma Multipurpose Room. Times for this event will be announced. A contemporary concert will be held Sunday, November 14th at 3.15 p.m. in the auditorium. And on Monday, Jenny Kwan will be in her own one-person play as she presents Faces of America. This show starts at 7 p.m. in the Hart Chapel Theater. And finally, on Wednesday, November 17th, the Quality Banquet and Awards Ceremony will be held in the Gemma Multipurpose Room beginning at 7 p.m. That's it for this week. See you next time on Entertainment Beat. I'm Carolyn Kelly, TV5 News. Thanks, Carolyn and Nani. Jen Bevavino joins us from the TV5 Weather Center with one final look at your Clarion area forecast. Jen? Taking a brief glance back to our current and extended weather conditions for Thursday, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 45 and a low of 31. For Friday, keep in mind there will be thunderstorms with a high of 56 and a low of 21. And for Saturday, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 58 and a low of 35. That's Clarion's current and extended weather conditions. Back to you, Dave and Christy. Thanks, Jen. And that about wraps it up for tonight's broadcast. Be sure to tune into TV5 News next Tuesday at 8 p.m. as Christy Desort and Brian Cook bring you continued coverage of local, state, and national news. I'm Dave Marsh. For the entire TV5 News team, I'm Christy Herman. Good night.